Hello, 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 hello. Testing. All right, so today I'm really not drawing anything. I'm still stuck with that number. What number was that? Day number 15, I think? Tick? Yeah, I got stuck with that, so I stopped drawing anything. So I'm gonna have to catch up with. I think I need to catch up on four drawings going to five, so whatever. Anyway, for today, I just wanted to highlight an artist, which is, I think, pretty cool. So I think. This is just my opinion. My th I think the problem with art in general is that. I think not a lot of artists are actually showing struggle or or they're not showing how simple things can actually turn into art. So you know when when you're seeing um, post from from artists, sometimes you get the finished product. You don't get to see process so you're like oh they're so good I guess they're really that good that they're not struggling to finish a project but in reality sometimes it's you know they have ups and downs and they might have an artist block but you don't see that what people see is people use expensive things like paint or drawing materials and so sometimes people who are not not confident enough to actually dive into any type of art might feel like well i don't have a good paint so therefore i won't be painting or i don't have a good type of um drawing material so therefore i'm not going to start so yeah I think there should really be more candid type of presentation from artists, especially if they're like well known, how they get to finish something like a project, even though even though it's not complete from start to finish, but at least some kind of some kind of um, showcase of how they actually do things like it doesn't really happen like like a flash sometimes you have to sit there and think how am I going to finish something or how am I going to do this you know planning color combination what materials to use anyway so I just wanted to highlight this artist which is as the title and description um, actually says is um, they just use a regular Vic pen which is like the cheapest pen out there it's so generic anybody can get it so yeah you can get a hold of any pencil any really anything and make into something you know it's like really imagination is the limit yeah so anyway i just wanted to highlight this person who actually is an artist and making art in making you know profit from the fruit of their labor from regular items so yeah anyway i'm gonna go um start the video and yeah let's go watch it and i think it's really really um what do you call it it's inspiring and i hope people who are watching this who are not confident enough to actually feel like they can draw anything will just watch it and say oh you know what let me try that let me let me just grab a pen and paper you know no matter how how um low quality it is and just start doodling 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 anyway 
sketching or whatever anyway so i'm gonna start this um video and hopefully hopefully the sound will come through let me just um you know what hold on let me just um i think i did it i think i did it wrong hold on let me just let me just see let me let me just mute the other music we're not going to be able to hear the narrative on the video Oop. okay so hold on let me just um this I can pause this one. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not so. Um, I haven't. I haven't uh, mastered streaming these type of things. So anyway, all right, let's do this. Hopefully, the sound comes through. You've probably doodled with one of these in class. A blue big. But when Oscar Ukonu uses it, he creates these monochromatic and hyper-realistic masterpieces that can sell for up to $600 per print to his clientele in Nigeria and around the world. To create something like this, Oscar will take up to six weeks and go through 10 pens. It's not that they all run out of ink, but because if he used only one pen the whole time, the nib would start bleeding from the constant friction. That's all right, let me just inter interrupt that part. So some people, a lot of people really, when it comes to art, are wondering why it's so expensive. Well, you know, it's like you have to really, you really have to um, put it, I mean, put in the calculation of how much it costs with how long they actually, how long it takes them to actually produce something. So you really, you're really paying for the creativity of the person, the labor, the material, and then everything else, you know. Anyway, and that's why it's expensive because it's handmade, especially if you're drawing it yourself. And it takes a while to actually finish it, depending on what type of material they're using. Anyway, here he goes. Let's go back to the drawing or the presentation. How much intensity creating these portraits requires intensity and a lot of skill so how exactly does he make intricately detailed faces out of one of the most common office supplies it comes down to three techniques hatching cross hatching and scribbling hatching is a common artist technique used in drawing to create tones and shading using closely spaced parallel lines you can see that here the single lines he's making are hatches, which create the base layer for creating shading and tones. They're typically used for lighter sections, but there can be variation even within hatching based on how many lines he draws, their closeness, and how much pressure he applies. The direction of the hatching can make different sections read as contrasting. For example, in this section, Oscar kept the lines relatively far apart to create an especially light part of the image. Compare that to here. There's about double the amount of lines in the same amount of space. The section is still lighter than the more shaded parts of the image, but it's darker than where Oscar hatched more spaced out lines. Hatching in curved lines creates contours on a face. Cross hatching is used for shadowy areas. You can see it a lot in comic books, but it's much more detailed here. And there's a lot more of it in order to make it hyper real. The overlapping crisscrosses create the illusion of depth. You can see it being used in this section, just under the lips, to create a shadow. Layering them makes the shadows even deeper and darker. With these two techniques, the final piece can show a full picture of the scene Oscar is trying to set. As a viewer, you'll be able to understand the lighting of the picture, which sets the mood of the whole piece. But to really bring the portrait to the finish line, Oscar will use his final technique, scribbling. 
But when he's talking about scribbling, it's not necessarily the doodling and randomly drawn lines you might think of. Oscar's version of scribbling is an improvisation based on skill that years of being an artist. Did you see the detail of that lips? Amazing. Has taught him. It's his technique for adding finishing touches. But before any of this work happens, each of Oscar's pieces starts with him taking about 100 photos of his subject, which get narrowed down to the 20 or so he'll use as reference when he puts pen to paper. The piece he's working on today is called Disinformation of a Republic. He'll start with a pencil sketch of the image so that the proportions are scaled to the size of the canvas he's working with. This will give him a foundation and help him understand the basic shapes he needs to create. Then he'll work from the top down, starting with the newspaper that's on top of the woman's head. Within it, there's tiny writing and other small images, like the photos that are typically attached to the story in the paper. Because these are so small, it will take even more precision and thoughtfulness. This section will be a mix of all three of his techniques, since it wraps around the head and will have varying lights and shadows. You might be wondering what happens when he makes a mistake. Well, Oscar says that he's learned to embrace those small mishaps into his pieces. However, he does take some small precautions. Although the pens he uses don't tend to smudge too much, he'll usually lean his hand on a piece of paper as he draws to minimize any smudging that may happen. Once that section is done, it's time for the section underneath, which includes most of the face, part of the ears, underneath the eyes, the nose, mouth, and chin. Here, Oscar has decided that the light source is hitting the person from the right side of the face, which means generally the thickest layers of hatching and cross hatching will happen on the left side of the face. From there, he'll continue drawing from the neck down, following the same idea where light would naturally hit and repeating those two techniques for the most part. Scribbling comes in mostly when Oscar is able to look at the entire image and go back in to improvise and elevate the details, like deepening the shadow on this pearl earring or adding a piece of stray hair that might realistically be. Again, I just wanted to point out the details. It's so amazing how he's doing it. Look at that. Look at that. And again, he's using a big, a big pen. Like the cheapest pin out there. It's so cool. Hey there. After six weeks of all this hatching, cross hatching, and scribbling, Oscar's piece will come together to form a portrait. Anyway, so that's that. I just wanted to highlight. Um this artist um, work. If you haven't seen it yet, I just wanted to share it with you. It's just amazing to me how the detail is so good in the finished product is like really amazing. And he's again, he's just using a big pen. And I hope people who are watching this who are like who are who's like me who's just starting um, to have to have inspiration on the thought of you can really use any type of media produce anything or to do some art that you want to produce yeah so anyway that's all I have I just wanted to share this information or this artist to you just in case you haven't, you, you don't know about this artist, guys, because I didn't know about this artist. I just wanted to share it with you guys. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That's all I have. I'm not really drawing today. I will be going back to Inktober, hopefully tomorrow. Because really, I don't have anything. <laughs> Yeah, so that's all I have. And uh, yeah, thank you for um, hanging out with me for a few minutes or so. I'm gonna go, I'm going to be um, looking for other artists that's using basic materials so that, you know, something that anybody can get a hold of in making amazing arts.
All right. Well, have a nice evening or have a nice day wherever you at. And I hope to share another artist to you next time. All right. Bye. Bye, Rocket Sauce. Thank you for hanging out with me. <laughs> yeah, until next time. See you.